Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Thank you. Thank you indeed for that warm welcome. Hello. You join us at the Radio Theatre in London for the penultimate heat of Brain of Britain 2023. A formidable lineup is already assured in the semi finals, and joining it will be at least one of our competitors today, whom we'll lose no time in meeting. Hello, I'm Dan Adlow, and I'm a computer plumber from Farnham in Surrey. Hello, I'm Hazel Humphreys. I'm a systems manager for Wivenhoe in Essex. Hello, I'm Anne McElhinney, a retired teacher from Llanethly in South Wales. Hello, I'm Richard Pine. I'm a retired management consultant from the London Borough of Richmond-on-Thames. Welcome, all of you. I say it often, but let me emphasise again that there's really nothing to be lost by guessing, even if you don't know the answer. Every point counts, especially because you can make it through to the semi-finals on a high score, even if you don't win this heat tonight. The best of luck. We go around in alphabetical order, as usual, so let's start today's contest with your first question, Dan Adler. Kratos is the fictional character and protagonist of which video game series produced by Sony Santa Monica Studios? God of War. That's the one, yes. The scene of a military coup in the summer of 2023, what is the capital city of the African state of Niger? N'Djamena. No. Anne McElhenney. Uh, Naomi. Yes, Naomi is the right answer. And we come to Hazel Humphreys' term. Goblin Market, written in 1859 and published in 1862, is a narrative poem by which English writer of romantic, devotional and children's poems? Christina Rossetti. That's right. Quoting the famous song by Edith Piaf, Je ne regrette rien, became the best-remembered phrase of which Conservative Chancellor of the Exchequer following so-called Black Wednesday in 1992? Norman Lamont? Yes, well remembered, it was Norman Lamont. A year after the Spanish Armada's failed attempt to invade England in 1588, a disastrous counter-armada took place, which is somewhat less celebrated in history lessons in Britain. In fact, you could be forgiven for never having heard of it. Which sailor led this inglorious 1589 mission? Francis Chichester. <laughs> that would have been remarkable. No. <laughs> No, uh, Dan Adler? Francis Drake? Yes, it was Sir Francis Drake again. Uh, he was in charge of the ships, Sir John Norris in charge of the troops, and the attempt on the Iberian Peninsula has been called the biggest disaster in English naval history. Anne McElhinney, which giant planet in our solar system has 14 known moons named after various sea gods and nymphs in Greek mythology? Neptune. Yes. Mozart's opera Così fan tutte is set in which Italian city? Milan? No. Uh, Hazel Humphreys? Florence? No, Florence, no. Dan Adler? Naples. It is Naples, yes. Richard Pine, on April the 26th, 1865. Whom did Sergeant Boston Corbett shoot dead at Garrett's Tobacco Barn in Virginia? Uh, John Wilkes Booth. The American stage actor who assassinated Abraham Lincoln, yes. Of which fellow BBC newsreader who died in 2023 did Fiona Bruce say he combined an utter seriousness and sense of purpose about the job with a lightness of touch? Uh, George Alagaya. Yes. Which European country, a popular holiday destination, has a name that translates from the Arabic, meaning the West? Uh, Croatia? No. Uh, Dan Adler? Malta? No. Worth a try? Anybody else? Lots of destinations. Hazel Humphreys? Portugal? Portugal is no. the right answer. Well done. Yes. And that brings us to the end of the first round with these scores. 
Richard Pine and Anne McElhenney, two apiece. Dan Adler and Hazel Humphreys, three apiece. Couldn't be nicer. Dan Adler, your next question entails listening to a piece of music. You're about to hear the pianist Bill Evans making perhaps the finest use of two minor 11th chords, consisting of three perfect fourths and a major third. The chord is usually known by what name? Also the title of this opening track of Miles Davis's classic 1959 album, Kind of Blue. So What? Yes, and that track uh, was called So What, and it's called the So What Chord. The term So What Chord was used extensively in the Jazz Piano Book, a landmark work of jazz theory by Mark Levine, who died in 2022 at the age of 83. Currently undergoing a major operation in Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum to remount it so as to minimize the risk of future damage, the large canvas known as the Night Watch is the work of which painter? Rembrandt. Rembrandt van Rijn, yes. In law, the Norton Rules, named after a man who tried to kill the 19th century Prime Minister, Sir Robert Peel, provide a legal definition of what? Insanity. Yes, criminal insanity, yeah. to be precise, but no, <coughs> insanity will do. Daniel McNaughton's persecution complex led him to attempt to kill Peel in 1843, and he actually did kill Peel's secretary, Edward Drummond. The BBC's first sports commentator, George Allison, was also the second longest serving manager of which football club with whom he won two league titles and an FA Cup in the 1930s? Arsenal. Arsenal FC is the right answer, yes. In terms of longevity managing Arsenal, Allison is second only to, guess who, Arsene Wenger. In ancient Rome, what name was given to a gladiator who fought with a net and a trident? They were the Retiari. Yes, so he was a Retiarius. Five in a row and a bonus mark for you. Very well done. Hazel Humphreys now. In September 2000, Craig Phillips was declared the first winner of which British reality television series? Big Brother. Yes, he won a cash prize of £70,000, which he donated to charity. Rabat is the capital of which mountainous country of Western North Africa? Morocco. Yes. According to the Oxford Companion to Wine, which ancient grape variety from the Vaucluse Département of Southern France has a name that translates as Lipstinger? Chablis? No. It has been available in your supermarket. Anne McElhenney. Chardonnay. No. More wine varieties? No, not coming. It's called Picapool. P-I-Q-U-E-P-O-U-L. Anne McElhenney now. Who was Roman Empress from 27 BC to 14 AD alongside her husband, the Emperor Augustus? Livia? Livia, Livia Drusilla. She was later known as Julia Augusta after her formal adoption into the Julian family in AD, AD 14. But Livia is right. What's the title of Anna Burns's Booker Prize winning novel set during the Troubles in Northern Ireland, which follows an 18 year old girl harassed by a paramilitary officer? Milkman? Yes, Burns became the first Northern Irish writer to win the Booker Prize for that work. According to Peter Sellers, which character he played in The Goon Show was based on a scoutmaster with a very high voice he once met called Ruxton Haywood. Eccles? No. Uh, Hazel Humphreys? Is it Colonel Bloodnose? No. Uh, Dan Adler? Major Bloodnock? No. <laughs> Richard, don't, I'm enjoying this tour of the cast. <laughs> Richard, uh, is it Richard Pye? Uh, Harbottle or something like that? 
Uh, not quite. It's Blue Bottle. Oh, I'm oh, yes, of Blue Bottle of Finchley. Yeah. In an interview with Michael Parkinson, Sellers described trying to keep a straight face while talking with this large, red-bearded man dressed as a scout leader and speaking with a falsetto voice. Richard Pine, in 1657, the Dutch mathematician Christian Huygens first patented a working what? A computer? No. Uh, Dan Adler? Telescope? No. Interesting suggestions. And Michael Henney? Microscope? No. Hazel, have a go. Calculator? No, I'm afraid not. It was a pendulum clock. Uh -huh. And he later devised a watch regulator called a balance spring. These inventions became standard components for keeping time accurately. End of the second round. Richard Pine, two. Anne McElhinney, four. Hazel Humphreys, five. Dan Adler, nine. Let's pause the contest, as we always do, at roughly this point, just for a couple of minutes. Our brains can sit back and enjoy the chance to work as a quiz team as we present them with a pair of questions fiendishly devised by a Brain of Britain listener. Today, it's Harris Mercer who's emailed his suggestions to brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk. And if between them the brains can't dispatch both of Harris's questions, we'll be sending him a book voucher prize. Are you ready for Harris's first question? Do discuss it among yourselves. Here it comes. The diaries of the late Alan Rickman were published in 2022 under a title that was taken from a film in which Rickman had a starring role in 1990. Can you name the film? Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. No, it's truly madly deeply. Of course it is. Yes, it is. Is that, is, was that that one? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, Shall we say it? Go ahead. Truly, madly, deeply. You are agreed on that? Of course it is. Uh, I'm quite happy to go with that. Good. We're... Hazel sounds like she knows what she's saying. She does. <laughs> I've got a copy underneath my bed. My, husband's, read, my husband's reading it at the minute, obviously. Yeah. I didn't she, know it. She absolutely d does know what she's saying. The <laughs> right answer. <laughs> Truly, madly, deeply was the film in which he starred opposite Juliet Stevenson. In fact, the book of diaries is titled Madly, Deeply. Right. Presumably because there was already a book called Truly Madly by Stephen Galloway, and that was about the relationship between Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee. Mm. Anyway, see if you can deal with Harris Mercer's second question as quickly as that. Alan Rickman had also appeared in a 1995 film alongside Hugh Grant based on a novel by Beryl Bainbridge with a title taken from a phrase in a well-known play. Again, can you name the film? Oh, it's God. something like a, a wonderfully good time or something like an awfully big adventure. Awfully big adventure. That's it's it. probably that one. Peter that Pan. Yeah. yeah. Are you happy with that, Richard? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're very happy very quickly. We're very, very, we're very amenable. Uh, we just do as she says. <laughs> yeah. <You're... laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Which one? You're right to do so because she's right. Yeah. <laughs> It is an awfully big adventure. The title is taken from a line concerning death in J.M. Barry's Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. Yeah. And the story is set among a rep theatre group in Liverpool who are putting on that play. Georgina Cates, Prunella Scales, Carol Drinkwater and Alan Armstrong were also in it, although it hardly broke box office records, considering it had such a starry cast. So, thank you, Harris Mercer, for those lovely questions, but I'm afraid you couldn't stump the brains on this occasion. So well, we can't oh, send you a prize. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure our radio theatre audience is keen to show its appreciation with this true, mad and deeply vibrant round of applause. We always enjoy receiving your question ideas for this part of the programme, and although we can't acknowledge all the questions we get, we do look at them very carefully. We tend to put them through our fact-checking process too, just to make sure they hold water, and they don't always. So please do your best to make sure they're accurate before you send them, or they won't get on air, I'm afraid. Let's get back to the contest then and see who's going to make it into the semi-finals. The next round starts with you again, Dan Adler. How often are elections held to the European Parliament? Every five years. Here's the right answer. The next European elections will take place in 2024 with more than 400 million people eligible to vote. 
In December 2021, in the American TV series, And Just Like That, a character called Mr. Big died after using an exercise machine. This fictional death caused which company's shares to fall by 11% overnight? Peloton. Yes. The show is a Sex in the City reboot. Mr. Big died after completing a 45-minute ride on one of that company's bikes. Consumption of just one Brazil nut per day for eight weeks has been shown to restore the proper levels of which chemical element in human blood? Iron? No. Anne McElhinney. Selenium? Selenium is right, yes. I'd never heard of that, but you had. Well done. <laughs> Hazel Humphreys, let's delve into BBC Sounds to listen to a radio series which visits with a comedian's eye different places across the UK. And after a quick trip to find what Hastings has to offer, I'd simply like you to name the programme. There's a 1066 Citizens Advice Centre, 1066 Waxing for Men, a, <laughs> a 1066 Psychotherapist, these are all true, 1066 Stress Management Centre, <laughs> and a 1066 Bakery and a 1066 Veterinary Centre. There are over 70 companies called 1066, including a builder called William the Concreter. <laughs> Is it Mark Steele's in your town? Mark Steele's in town, that's, that's close enough, yes. You could call it a more modern comedic version of Down Your Way, a clip of which we included earlier in the series. And then again, perhaps not. The amino acid tryptophan, the chemical element tungsten, the physical product of force and displacement, the force of an object due to gravity, and the SI unit of power can all be represented by which single letter of the alphabet? W? Yes, the last four standing for Wolfram, Work, Weight and the Watt. In an 1885 novel by Francis Hodgson Burnett, the young Cedric Errol inherits which title? Lord Fauntleroy. Little Lord Fauntleroy he becomes, indeed. Sidney Francis Patrick Chippendall Healy Kay was knighted in 1981 for services to dance. Under what professional name had those services been rendered? Fred Astaire? Mm, no. Uh, Anne McElhinney? Robert Helpman? No. Dan Adler? Frederick Ashton? No. One more coming? No not coming. It was Anton Dolin, the first great British-born ballet star of the 20th century, who first came to fame with Diaghilev's Ballet Russe. Anne McElhinney, in June 2023, which Welsh politician and member of the Senedd became deputy leader of Plaid Cymru, the party of Wales? I really should know this, yeah. but I don't. Oh. oh, dear. I'm so sorry. Mark Dreckford, but I know it's not that. No. <laughs> uh, Richard Pine knows. Adam Price? No. No, he's gone. No. Dan Adler? Jones? No. <laughs> <laughs> A very shrewd guess, but no. <laughs> but no. It's rather far from that, actually. Her name is Delith Jewell. Oh. So, Richard Pye now. In a February 2023 cabinet reshuffle by Rishi Sunak, who was appointed as the first Secretary of State at the newly created Department for Business and Trade? Um, Out of time, I fear. Anne McElhinney? Is it Grant Shapps? No, it usually is, but it's... Yeah, wasn't. no, exactly. <laughs> Five jobs. Well, it wasn't on this occasion. <laughs> Dan Adler? Uh, Kemi Badenoch. Kemi Badenoch, um, yes. yes. Olu Kemi Olufunto Badenoch yeah. is yeah. her full name. End of another round. These are now the scores. Richard Pine, two points. Anne McElhaney, five. Hazel Humphreys, eight. Dan Adler, 12. Right.
write that out, look back to you then. In Norse mythology, Frigg, also called Freya, was the wife of whom? Odin. Yes. What was the title of the BBC radio programme that featured the Cliff Adams singers with Jack Emblo on accordion, which ran for 42 years, first on the light programme and then on Radio 2? Oh, it's a bit before my time. Sing something simple? Yes. Oh, well done. Right answer. <laughs> Became familiar to millions of listeners who wouldn't otherwise have been its natural audience because for many years it was scheduled immediately before the Top 40 show on a <laughs> Sunday afternoon. It was said by the programme's veterans that Jack Emblo never played a wrong note on his accordion in the whole history of the show. Which language, still spoken in South America, was the principal language of the Inca Empire? I don't know. Right. Carry on. <laughs> Hazel Humphreys. Quechua. Quechua, yes, that's right. We come to Hazel Humphreys' question. In Middle Eastern cuisine, what is the thick paste known as tahini made from? Sesame seeds. Yes, a primary ingredient in traditional Middle Eastern hummus. The peak of Mount Hillaby is the highest point on which island in the Eastern Caribbean? Antigua? No. Uh, Dan Adler knows? Barbados? Barbados is right, yes. And Michael Henney, 2023 marks the 90th anniversary of the release of a classic work of science fiction by H.G. Wells, which was loosely adapted for a 1936 film produced by Alexander Corder. You're about to hear Arthur Bliss conducting part of the film's score, after which I'd like you to name either the book or the film. The Invisible Man. No, afraid not. Dan Adler? Things to Come, or The Shape of Things to Come. That's exactly right. The film title was shortened to Things to Come. You heard the march composed by Sir Arthur Bliss. Uh, Richard Pine. In April 1910, William Howard Taft was the first American president to start a tradition that has been carried on by every US president except Jimmy Carter, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. What tradition am I referring to? Um, sparing a turkey just before Christmas. <laughs> uh, no. Dan Adler. Sparing a turkey before Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> no, even, even more important, yes, but that's not the answer. No, no one knows. It's um, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch at a Major League uh, Baseball uh, game while in office. That's the important. End of another round. Richard Pine, two points, and Michael Henney, five. Hazel Humphreys, ten. Dan Adler, sixteen. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, folks, that this is the final round of the contest. Dan Adler, here's your question. E. E. Cummings, the American poet, is commonly supposed to have insisted on seeing his name spelt in lowercase letters only. But it seems to have been publishers who created that habit. In writing his signature, he used capitals, as most of us do. But what names do the E.E. E. stand for? Edwin, Edwin. <laughs> uh, Richard Pine. Eric Edward. No. Worth a go. And McElhenney? Ernest Errol. No. <laughs> Edward Ezra? That's very much the closest. Edward Estlin is oh. actually the thing. <laughs> and, the, guess that, oh yeah. and funnily enough, the, the, words, the only words on his gravestone are his names, spelt out entirely in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel Humphreys, which bird provides the mascot and logo of the monthly ornithology magazine, British Birds? The Puffin? No. Uh, Dan Adler. Avocet? No. Dan McElhinney? The Wren? No. Richard Pine. And the Pelican? 
No, no, not British enough for this. It is the red grouse. It was chosen, chosen because at the time it was thought to be an endemic British species, although it's now considered a subspecies of the willow grouse. And McElhinney's question now. Which British author's books include Lara, Mr. Loverman, and Girl, Woman, Other? Um, Bernadine Everista? Correct answer, yes. In which TV situation comedy did Victoria Wood play Brenda, the deputy manager of a canteen, with Julie Walters as her eccentric mother, Petula? Oh, dinner ladies. Yes. Right faith, right conduct, and right knowledge are the three guiding principles or three jewels of which ancient Indian religion? Sikhism? No. Uh, Dan Adler. Jainism? Jainism is the right answer, yes. Richard Pine, music now from the 2023 BBC Proms, featuring the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Ilan Volkov, in a popular work by Tchaikovsky. Can you identify the numbered symphony performed here? The second symphony? No. Uh, Dan Adler? Uh, it's number six, the Pathétique. The Pathétique, number six in B minor. That is the right answer. Bringing us to the end of today's heat with the final scores looking like this. Richard Pine, two points. Anne McElhinney, seven points. Hazel Humphreys, ten. Dan Adler, 18. <laughs> So well done, Dan Adler. You very nearly sprinted away, and we'll look forward to seeing you again very soon in the semi finals. It's been a great contest, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking part. And thank you for listening. Do join us for the last remaining heat of Brain of Britain 2023 right here next week. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>